Alright, I am uh, sitting now next to the, well, not too close to the road, so I'm safe. And uh, behind me, two different ways, like I said, this whole area was probably Henry Low Muds. He owned it. And whether his house was on this side of me, or on this side of me, not 100% sure. But I got a couple of accounts here. So first, here is Dr. Mud talking about when he and Harold came to um, see his father's house. And this is, the, this is an account that Dr. Mudd gave to Colonel Wells on the 22nd of April in 1865. And I'm just going to read part of it. It says, Between 12 and 1 o'clock, when this young man, who is Harold, and I rode over to my father's place in order to see if we could get a carriage for the wounded man, but I found that the carriages were all out of repair except one, and we could not get that one. He concluded to go to Bryantown for a conveyance to get his friend over as far as his friend, Mr. Wilmer's. So again, we have Mud talking about how he was told by Harold that they wanted to get to Parson Wilmer's on the west side of the Sky Swamp. Now, the reason... So we know Harold came here. Harold came here. Then, after they left Dr. Mud's, and they went, apparently, down that little path that I was on, then there's an account by a former slave of Henry Low Mud's, who at that point was a free man, but still stayed on working here at Oak Hill, with his former master. Now, Electus Thomas remembers seeing Davy three times. As we know, like I just read from Dr. Mudd, they decided to go to Bryantown after striking out here. Um, Dr. Mudd needed to buy some things for Mrs. Mudd and whatnot, and so Davy came with him. But according to Ed Steers, Davy's horse was a bit faster and more spirited than Dr. Mudd's, and so he was actually on his own for quite a bit. So according to Electus Thomas, is, uh, he, and he's got three um, statements that are in the evidence, and so I copied them out of here. Um, and so I'm just going to read kind of part of them. Uh, I'm probably just going to paraphrase it. So according to Electus Thomas, so he's working. During the day, he sees a man on horse. He sees the same man three times. The first two times he sees him on horseback. He sees him ride by Oak Hill on the way to Bryantown, which would be that direction, um, on his horse. And he says, the first time he merely nodded at me. And so he passed him toward Bryantown. Then he saw him coming back from Bryantown, heading toward Dr. Mudd's house um, at a, spirit, a faster pace, not too long after that. Then he claims that around dusk, now Dr. Mudd said that Booth and Harold left his house between 4 and 5. So he said around dusk, Electus Thomas said, the same man who he had saw on horseback twice, going to Bryantown and then heading back toward Beantown, um, came up to him, this time not on horseback, but on foot. He just walked out of the swamp toward him. Now, if this land behind me was Dr. Mud, was L Henry Low Muds, that land probably was too. And the swamp isn't all that far from there. So, according to Electus Thomas, the guy walked out of uh, the swamp, and he started asking him things. He, when he came up, he said, I am entirely lost. Which way is the east, the west, and the south? I told him as nigh as I could. He asked me where the sun rose and the sun set, and I told him as near as I could come to it. He asked me whether did not Dr. Sam live about, and I told him yes, and which way to get to the doctor. A while after, he asked me, could he stay here? I told him I did not know, but I would go and see. Then he says, I will not trouble anyone tonight. I will take the swamp for it, he said. He said, is there a large swamp here? I said, yes. I told him where. I told him if he took the swamp and followed it down, it would take him to Bryantown Bridges. He asked me how I would like to go to Bryantown with him. I told him I would not like it at all. Whether he went the way I told him or not, I cannot say. Before he got out of my sight, my wife had been pulling me for fear the man would injure me. As soon as he went away, I went into the house. So, a lot of authors and researchers have taken this to be, this man, to be Davy Harold. Why he came out of the swamp without his horse, don't know. But we know they didn't cross the swamp. They didn't cr cross it west. Whether they ever intended to, whether Mud was lying, whether Davy was lying to Mud, don't know. They didn't cross the swamp to the west. So it's possible that that is Davy Harold. He said he saw the man three times. The way he describes him in another account is pretty close to Davy. And so it's possible that he was... Davy and Booth had become lost after leaving Dr. Mudd's. Maybe they went into the swamp, like Mudd said, got lost in there, and came out here not too far south from where Dr. Mudd, Mudd's house was. And you notice at one point in that account, Davy, even though he asked if he could stay here, which would seem unusual because it's not very far, he also asked Electus Thomas if he would like to go with him. In another account, he says 
um, Alexis Thomas says that they offered him five dollars. That this man offered him five dollars to go with him, and so even at this point, they were looking for a guide, and so that's why I think it's a pretty good assumption that it was Davy who left Booth with his horse, not too far from here in the swamp area, and went looking for a guide because the swamp was too treacherous for them. And though Davy had been enjoyed hunting in Charles County. If you don't know that territory, you're going to get lost, you're going to get turned around, and it's going to take you forever to get through. And it's just a miserable place to be anyway. So, I believe that Davy did come here. That they maybe started out trying maybe just to hug the swamp, heading toward Bryantown Bridges, which is what Electus Thomas told them to do, but found it was either too hard to go, or just something that they, they weren't prepared for. And so I can definitely see Davy coming out, obviously now it's houses, but coming from this direction, toward Henry Lomud's house, a place that he had been to, so even though he wanted to make sure where he was, lost and wanted to find a guide. So while it's not 100% sure that Davy came here after they left Mud's, it's, it's not, it doesn't hurt to think that he did. So at this point, I'm going to continue walking. Uh, it's probably going to be a while before you hear from me, because the next spot I'm going to go to is uh, much farther down the road, and as I get closer to it, I'll... Uh, talk about this is another possible place that Booth and Harold came but we don't have the exact um, exact proof that it happened alright this is Dave Taylor at uh, it's 8.53 and I'm signing off the sun's starting to come out those, those clouds those morning clouds are gone so I'm going to need my shades from here on out so at about 8.53 Dave Taylor signing off alright I'm currently at the intersection of Bryantown Road and Dr. Samuel A. Mud Road so here's Mud Road continuing on um, easterly, and then I just, it, it started to curve from north and south to now it's almost straight east and west. Now Booth, now assuming that the man that Electus Thomas saw at Henry Lowe Mud's farm was Harold, and that Harold took his advice, it was probable that they then came on this road. And they got here to an intersection, didn't look exactly like this back then, in fact here's my, so I can get my old map to show up. Yeah. The wind has got me today. Alright, so we are at Dr. Mudd's. And I stopped at Oak Hill. Come on. Focus. Whatever. So we're at the intersection. I know it's blurry, but right there. Now, if we continue. Now, back then, it was almost a straight shot down the road from Dr. Mudd's. Down. And then you take the right route right into Bryantown. So we're here, essentially, back then at that intersection. Which is a little different today. Now, if I wanted to make my route to Oswald Swan the fastest, I would take this road through Bryantown, and then it would be a much shorter walk, not too, too shorter, but it would be a shorter walk for me to go this way. But we know that Booth and Harold were not going to go to Bryantown. Harold had already gone into Bryantown ahead of Dr. Mudd, saw the Union troops, car, and uh, he skedaddled back to tell Booth, we got we to gotta make tracks because there's uh, troops in Bryantown. So, if I went through Bryantown, it would be absolutely not the way that the two would go. Even, they didn't even probably take Electus Thomas's idea to just hug the swamp until he got to Bryantown Bridges. Because, once again, that would end them up right in Bryantown, within the grasp of the Union troops. So, instead, I'm going to continue going this way, which is probably the same way that Booth and Harold took in order to get to Gallant Green. So, like I said, we were at... Ugh, wind. We are at Dr. Mudd's. We are at Oak Hill. And I'm at this intersection right here. And so instead of going down into Bryantown, I'm going to follow it up here. And then I'm going to take Gallant Green down, which is probably what they did too in order to swing as far east of Bryantown as they could get. And my goal is to go to this place, the home of Joseph Cantor. And I'll talk more about him when I get there, but I'm sorry, I had the wrong road. Not This is not a road, that's a railroad track. So I'm going to take the road here, intersection down here, and I'm going to take this road, Gallant Green Road nowadays. And here's the Gallant Green Post Office to Joseph Cantor's. So, Bryantown is down that road. Dr. Mudd's is up this way. And I'm going to continue this way until I get to Gallant Green Road. So I'm going to be heading east now. And then I will uh, turn south. This is Dave Taylor at uh, 9.10 a.m. signing off. Well, it's about 9.55, and I'm sitting here near the corner of Gallant Green Road, which is the road that I'm on, and then the road that I was just on, Aquasco Road, which has the name of Dr. Samuel A. Mud Road, a little bit closer to the house. And I'm sitting here not because I'm in any 
not particularly tired, but because my feet uh, kind of turned into a sauna from all the dew around Dr. Mu's house, and then uh, this car. All the dew around Dr. Mud's house soaked into my shoes and got my feet wet, and now walking in them, it's kind of like a sauna, so I'm letting them breathe right now. But this would be about the intersection, uh, I mean, these roads existed, obviously the intersection didn't look like this, that uh, Booth and Harold would have got, would have come down on, probably. They were avoiding Bryantown. Um, I am east of, uh, east of Bryantown, so Bryantown is west of here. And then uh, I'm going to be going forward here, and that's going to be due south, essentially. So I'm skirting Bryantown, which we know the two of them would have done in order to avoid the troops. And it is likely that they would have come down that way, as in that map. Let me bring up that map real quick. Ugh. Map that I keep bringing up here. Now I'm not going to be able to see. Mm. Oh well, I'm going to just gonna do a generic. I can't really tell what you're seeing right now, but hopefully it's close. So I am uh, at an intersection right about here. So I walked a Quasco Road, which today turns into Dr. Samuel Mud Road, down to here, and now I'll be going south onto, uh, on Gallant Green Road. And it's likely this is the way that they took, because the only other main road, if they took the roads, was the one that goes straight into Bryantown, and we know they're not going to take that one. Again, all of this is just approximate, because, you know, they're fugitives, do they stick to the main roads? My old mother asked me this question after I did this last one, be like, which... Where would they have gone specifically? I, I don't know the exact route if they would have found little crossroads if they're hiding near the wooded areas, if they took the main roads. I mean, they were trying to go under cover of darkness, so perhaps that was enough for them, but this is at least the most approximate route that I can use using roads that at least were there back when uh, Booth and Harold were there. But I will say one thing. Uh, even with a map, a paper map, and GPS, and all that stuff, you can still get lost. I walked about 10 minutes down the wrong road before realizing that I had gone the wrong way. So, I can imagine that it's very easy for Harold to have gotten lost near the swamp to come out and ask Electus Thomas for some help. So, even with all this technology, uh, human error still exists. So I'm going to sit here for maybe just a couple more minutes. I've already had one person who has seen me sitting on the side of the road ask me if I was okay. So that's good old-fashioned Charles County, um, uh, I guess, um, hospitality, making sure that everything's okay. And I don't want to worry anybody else. So once my feet get a little dry, I'm going to start on my way. This is Dave Taylor at about oh, a couple minutes to ten, signing off. Well, Gallant Green Road is a very long road. It is currently 1040, and in front of us, between these two poles, is a house that stands on the former lot that belonged to Joseph Cantor. So, who is Joseph Cantor? Well, there's not a lot of information on him. Probably James O. Hall did the best job of digging into him, and what he has at the uh, research center shows that you know he had land off of Gallant Green Road here, and that this house, with James o. Hall, which James O. Hall photographed in 1980 is on the same property line that Joseph Cantor had. You see cars going by right now. They are on Gallant Green Road. I am off the road a little bit behind some train tracks so that people aren't worried about me sitting down. So, why am I stopping here? Well, it's because of David Harold. Now, he made his statement after he was arrested and brought to Washington. He was on board the Ironclads. He was interrogated, and uh, he gave a statement. Now, it is filled with lies and half-truths, and he does a really good job of covering up his own involvement. He even says that during the entire time that Booth got his legs set, he was nowhere in the area. He left Booth uh, in the morning, and uh, he magically got his legs set, and then he caught back up with him near Bryantown. And so, it, everything that Davy says has to be taken, you know, with a grain of salt. But there are also parts in here that are truthful and things that might hint to what they were doing. So at one point, Davy in his statement, he is saying he is away from Booth. At this point he's saying that Booth is at Mud's, he doesn't name Dr. Mud. He said Booth is somewhere getting his legs set and Davy is on his own. And then it says, let's see. 
Oh, okay. It says, from the time you first met... So this is investigators asking Davey questions. From the time you first met him until you parted with him, was there anybody else with him? Answer, no, sir. We were. We two were alone. When I met him, he says, come, let us take a ride down the road. I went to a free darkies and bought some bread and milk. I went to a man at Crackling Town, above Bryantown, and got a drink. I don't know the darkies name from whom I got the bread and milk. He lives below Bryantown. I have stopped within a mile of where he lives. It was about seven or eight o'clock. We went slowly. Booth would not ride fast. When I accused him a second time of the murder of the president, he said, I did it, and said also, if you leave me here, there are parties in Washington that will put you through. Question. When was it that you accused him the first time? Answer. At Bryantown, Saturday afternoon, when I left him, you know, I heard of it. Question. How did you come to hear that the president had been killed and that a man named Booth had done it? Answer. Who it was who it was told me, I do not know. I do not know the gentleman's name. Where was it? Answer. It was below Bryantown. Question. Whereabouts? Answer. Between Bryantown and Charlotte Hall. If I'm not mistaken, the gentleman's name is Cantor. So, in Davy's statement... He says he's away from Booth during the time at Muds, which we know is incorrect, but that he hears about Lincoln's assassination from a man named Cantor, who was between Bryantown and Charlotte Hall. Well, James O. Hall researched it and found the only one named Cantor who lived in the area was Joseph Cantor, and that this is where he would have lived. So while it's, we know it's not true that D.B. heard for the first time from Cantor that Lincoln had been assassinated, it is possible that on their way and on their way through the, through the escape that they stopped here at Joseph Cantor's house. Now, obviously this is not the same house, but you know, they just came from Gallant Green like we said looking out the roads, they didn't go into Bryantown like he said because it was swarming with troops. They would have, you know, skirted Bryantown, which would have made them come down here down Gallant Green Road. Now, uh, Cantor's house would have been further away from the road than this is. Obviously, roads are much closer, or houses are much closer to roads nowadays. He had more of a lot, so it would have been back behind it. But it's not impossible that the two of them came here, maybe once again looking for a guy, just like they did when they um, stumbled into uh, when Harold came up to Electus Thomas up at Oak Hill. So even if they didn't stop here, this is the most likely route. And since Cantor's place was right off this route, it's not impossible to think that Davy is telling a half-truth here. Not that he heard for the first time that Lincoln was assassinated, but that this is a spot that they, they stopped at, maybe to get food, maybe to ask for help. And the fact that he gives the man's name makes me think that he probably didn't get a warm reception here. There was, when Davy gives a name, it's usually someone who they who didn't help them, someone, or, and when he doesn't give a name or he gives a fake name, it's usually someone who did help them. For example, when they, when he talks about going to Rich Hill, he doesn't say Samuel Cox, you know, owner of Rich Hill, he says a man who lives there by the name of Thomas. So he changes the name when, and we know that Sam Cox did give them a great deal of help. So it's possible that Cantor did not give them help, and that is why Davy has no problem spreading his name. So where I'm going from here, so this is the lot of Joseph Cantor next to Gallant Green Road. I'm going to continue down Gallant Green Road, and then uh, that's going to run me into Route 5. I'll bring my little map up here for a second, so I can get stuff down. Cloud cover is nice. Alright, so we are here. Hold on a second. There we go, that's nice and zoomed in. Joseph Cantor's off of Gallant Green Road. So, and then we're going to come down to here, and our next stop is here, the home of Oswald Swan. Now you can see, at least on this map, there's not really any roads that went from Gallant Green into, this is Burnt Store Road, unless he went through Hill, Hughesville and then cut back around. Maybe there was a path or something that made it easier. I am going to cheat a little bit because I don't want to walk all the way to Hughesville and then back again. So I'm going to take five. I'm going to go back a little bit and then head south and I'll cut across right down here and that'll take me real close to Oswald Swans and this is a place we know that they went to so from Dr. Mudd's to Swans we don't exactly know but it's strongly implied and very possible that they went to Oak Hill and here to Joseph Cantor's and this route would have been one that they would have taken to avoid a hot spot in Bryantown remember they told Dr. Mudd that they wanted to go here Piney Church but Piney Church was on 
the west side of the swamp, which ran this line up here is the swamp. There's a little branch here by Dr. Mudd's. Uh, but eventually they wanted to go west, so that was their ultimate goal, because the Potomac... Let me see if I have it on. It's not in this picture. The Potomac is west, and that's the only way that... That's their m way of escaping. So right now they're stuck east. They don't want to stay east, but they have to go around Bryantown, where the troops are. So this is just in that line. You can see there's this natural curve to go around Bryantown before they get to Swans. So I'm going to continue walking now down Gallant Green, and then I'll cut across an invisible road that's here now that may not have been there in order to get me to the home of Oswald Swan. So this is Dave Taylor. It is 10.45 a.m. on July the 24th, and I am signing off from the site of Joseph Cantor's house off of Gallant Green Road.